Hi everyone, it's Melissa Waffles who decided to take a nap right now on my lap. And Brian. We hope you're having a good day. In this video, we're going to talk about um, some truck maintenance. Yeah, recently we had our reefer unit decide to uh, pop an oil line. And we had oil running all the way down the back of our reefer and onto our fuel tanks, making a big puddle on the ground. Of course, it was very unexpected and uh, while we were en route. So luckily we weren't super far away from a carrier repair facility where we were able to go in and get it repaired. Uh, I'll post a picture up here of the oil leaking out everywhere. Luckily it's not a huge huge deal as long as it's uh, Monday through Friday you can get into a facility and get it get it repaired like we were able to so we thought uh, we would do a video on truck maintenance yeah all right so the nice thing with being with a fleet is that when something does happen you don't have to worry about how you're going to pay for it. <laughs> right. The exam covers yeah. all the repairs. <laughs> it doesn't come out of your pocket. Yeah. So some of the things that you'll go through each year that's due is, of course, a DOT yearly inspection. Just making sure the truck is all good. So if um, you were to be have an inspector inspect you that you're past, that's the goal is to always have your truck um, able to pass those DOT inspections. Yeah, it's like a pre-roadside inspection. You get a sticker, they put it on the side of the truck that shows you've been through for the inspection. It's something that FedEx does require. FedEx will remind the drivers or the fleet owner or both that the trucks do for its inspections. Uh, it's pretty easy, but TA loves uh, any of the truck stops pretty much do them. And as long as there's not a long wait, it only takes about 20, 30 minutes to get it done. So that's an easy one, but it is something you have to do while you're on the road all the time, or yearly. Yearly, <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, there's other yearly truck maintenance, and they're going to make sure, they'll keep track of those due dates, and they'll remind you a month or two ahead that, hey, you're gonna have this inspection due before you can carry more loads. So find a spot to go have it done. Right. So that's nice that they keep track. Yeah. Um, and just remind us when. Yeah, every, every Monday or Tuesday, the fleet manager with exam is gonna ask for your truck mileage, um, your reefer hours and your APU hours. Uh, because they're tracking when the maintenance is due on that. So typically they give you about a three week to a month notice um, that you've got a service interval coming up and you'll need to uh, look for a shop to get that done at. Um, typically it's a good time when you're doing your 34 hour reset to, if you're at a shop, to drop it in for maintenance as long as you're able to park there. Um, and not move while you're on your reset. So that's what we've always done and it's, it's always worked out pretty good. Yeah. Um, another thing that needs certified yearly is the reefer unit yep. itself. So yeah. again, they'll tell you when that's due. Yeah, and there's a, what is it, temperature, temperature validation once a year with FedEx where they have to uh, look at the probes, the temperature probes at the back of the truck and uh, verify that um, the temperature in the truck is what your readouts on your data logger is actually showing. Uh, that's something that exam or FedEx pays for it. I'm not sure who pays for it, but we don't have to pay for it. I know that much. <laughs> but that's easy. You just drive the carrier, tell them that you're there for a temperature validation. Uh, with FedEx Custom Critical, and they they take care of all of it. You just you just show up. Yeah, and then if you're on a driving along and something does break down, yeah, tires. <laughs> We've flat had a tire, few tire flat tires. 
luckily we haven't had them on the freeway the highways they've been on side streets and in, in and around cities yeah um so we were able just to right go into a shop yeah i think this this industry with how much miles you're putting on the road you're you're gonna get a flat tire eventually uh, we've had two or three we've always lucked out and we never had to have it repaired on the side of the road uh, because we were close enough to a shop to pull in or i noticed a very uh, slow leak with a big screw in the tire and it was something we were able to finish the load that we were on add some air to the tire along the way and then get it fixed after we delivered but there are um, like repair trucks roadside repair trucks that the different shops can send out depending on how far away you are from the nearest shop um, so if you do have a full blowout uh, you can you know, have a truck come and replace or repair the tire on the side of the road. Uh, I believe they do some minor maintenance uh, issues or breakdown issues. Um, of course, they're pretty limited, but when it comes to uh, tire issues on the side of the road, there is saving grace. And of course, there is always tow trucks. These big trucks can be towed, um, and that's always an option as well. Yeah. The nice thing is, is I've never, I've never felt nervous even through any of our breakdowns. Yeah. I guess I could be a nervous Nelly, and I've never felt nervous yeah. driving around that we're stranded or something's gonna happen like I have before on a car in a road on my yeah. own road trip. <laughs> so it's nice peace of mind. Yeah. There's 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 somebody out there or there's a shop nearby, so you could usually get fixed we've been lucky that we've never had a roadside repair fingers fingers crossed hopefully not we're not jinxing ourselves <laughs> but yeah. you don't you don't have to worry that you'll be completely stranded there is always a, a backup option and if you are <laughs> stranded you have a really nice extended yeah. sleeper and you got kitchen you got and a, bathroom you got toilet so bathroom it's all good you'll be okay <laughs> <laughs> The other, the only other, well, not the only, but the other thing that we've had to repair or deal with is um, the ARR sleeper. Oh, yeah. Since we're talking about that. And it was a fun location because it's in northern Indiana. It was beautiful. Yeah. The shop, everyone was really nice. Super nice people up there. And Quake, like a Quaker town. It's a Quaker, and, it was, <laughs> and it was real fun just to walk. You could, it was in walking distance to restaurants. Yep. and. So that was kind of a, a fun repair. Yeah, that was a fun repair. Horse, horse and buggies going down the sides of the road. That was pretty cool to see. Yeah. Um, ARI's sleepers facility was uh, super, I guess, uh, proactive or um, not, not quite sure the word I'm trying to say, but, but they get the job done. That's what I'm trying to say. They got us in, they got the issue fixed. Uh, they offered to look through anything else that we might have had issues with or concerns with. Um, I was extremely impressed with ARI sleepers and their facility and the people that worked there. Uh, they checked a few kind of routine maintenance items in their eyes. Uh, they looked at our overhead air conditioning and found a small issue with that and fixed it that we didn't even know about. Uh, it's a really good facility and we're super happy with our our ARI sleeper in the back. It's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. The other things that are covered uh, are truck washes every yeah. few months. Exam will cover the truck wash and then they take care of the yearly truck registration and state and the state permits and all of that. So we really don't have to worry about anything just driving safely yeah. and doing our job getting loads to and from places. Yeah, you, you just basically drive and load, strap it down and pull up to the maintenance facilities. Uh, there are some maintenance, th little maintenance things you'll want to do, kind of like during your pre-trip inspection or, or things that you could be looking out for. Um, of course, it always helps if you're a little mechanical. Yeah, a little mechanical knowledge isn't isn't a bad thing yeah <laughs> okay so let me ask you sweetie 
If someone is thinking of doing this and they're wondering about what they could bring or need to bring for their own truck maintenance, what would you suggest? Um, for one, you're gonna wanna have some gloves that can get dirty. I have a dedicated pair of gloves for checking oil and filling up uh, diesel at the pumps. So bring some gloves, uh, the fuses. Uh, you definitely wanna have a set of extra fuses, the smaller fuse and the bigger fuse, um, and 10, 20, and 30 amp fuses. I have needed some a couple times. Um, one of them was our liftgate fuse popped while we were loading at a military facility. And um, it was a little bit embarrassing <laughs> as I was running from the fuse panel to the back and yelling up to Melissa, is, is it working? Is it not working? And, uh, but thank goodness I had fuses and uh, was able to find which fuse it was and, and fix it and continue loading and continue on with the load. Yeah. And the fuse um, panel is right here in yeah, the front. It's behind the pops off. Behind the covering of the dash. Um, most of the trucks, the two different trucks we've been in, already had a big jug or a five quart oil jug of engine oil. Um, if it doesn't, let Exam know the truck doesn't have extra oil um, on the boxes outside of the truck. And they will pay for it to make sure you always have extra oil on hand. Uh, that's the oil you can top off your APU with, or you can top off your uh, engine oil level with. Same thing with radiator fluid. You should have a big gallon jug of, of uh, radiator fluid. Um, these trucks do seem to kind of burn through it. Uh, maybe every uh, month, month and a half, two months, I'll have to add um, a little bit. You know, sometimes even as much as a half a gallon of uh, radiator fluid, so you want to have that on hand. And also um, like an empty jug, like an empty water jug that you can fill water up and top off your windshield wiper um, reservoir because they have water, but they don't have a way to get it to the truck. So having an empty jug is a good idea for that. A flashlight, bring a really bright flashlight if you are looking uh, at one of your tires or doing your pre or post trip inspection at night. It's good to have a flashlight. Um, and like a small tool set, I just have like a small ratchet, socket, wrenches, screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, you know, just a small little toolbox full of stuff. Because uh, sometimes things rattle loose uh, inside the cab or inside the sleeper. Uh, I had a mirror I had to tighten that was loose, um, a license plate bracket was loose, little little things like that happen while you're bouncing down the road. So having a few basic tools with you for your own, your own little repairs and maintenance is always a good idea. Yeah, so. but all in all, um, besides those little things, really uh, a truck this big, there's not much we have to do for no. truck maintenance. <laughs> Just a little things. Yeah. All right. Thanks well, for watching that's our it video. For this video. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.